This little node is so small. This is the Heltec T114. If you haven't seen the last video I did introducing this and my quick kind of run down of this new device from Heltec, um, go check that out. But today what we're gonna do, a few people have been asking what the power consumption of this little device is. Um, so we're gonna do some tests, just simple bench tests today, and we'll find out exactly what the answer to that question is. Um, but you can already see that I'm running it on this tiny little battery here and it's been running a while, so the consumption's gotta be pretty low. Right, so this is my little test setup that I'm gonna to use to test the power consumption of the Heltec T114. So I've just got this little one cell lithium polymer battery which we would normally use to power nodes. Um, very low power, this is beeping. And I've got this multimeter here which was super cheap. You can grab these and, and do this test yourself very easily. Um, basically, um, it's gonna be measuring in milliamps, this one actually goes up to, this will actually do 10 amps DC, which is quite good for a small, cheap multimeter these days. But we've got it set to milliamps because these things draw, you know, not very much current at all. So we've got this all set up and the wire is interrupted here so we can measure current. So if I take the Heltec T114, I've literally unplugged that little battery that I showed you before on the back there because we want to be powering it from, from this one down here. And if we plug this in, being careful to, we'll see not, break anything because these are super little flimsy little connectors so it's starting to boot up you can see two milliamps here and then it's going to go up and it should probably go up quite high for a little while as the device boots up and does its does its stuff um, now this one isn't connected by bluetooth to my phone or anything like that i don't believe um, it should it hasn't got wi-fi turned on or anything like that so it's just straight up um, you know, basically just, just as it is. You should see in a minute some lower transmissions happening on here. Like as the radio goes in to transmit, this will probably peak up. There you go, 186 milliamps on transmit. You know, it does that so briefly that... Now, obviously we've got the screen on at the moment. There's another beacon there, so... Um, obviously you've got the screen on here with the LED behind the backlight. This little flashing LED, which is probably not taking a huge amount, but there's generally some stuff going on on here at the moment see there's a message been received and, and everything else so you'd expect this to fall quite a bit um as as the device settles down after the first boot and everything else look there you go nine milliamps and then it's peaking up i'm not sure what this is here i've seen this before but it it kind of flicks between nine and 15 for a bit um i'm not sure exactly what it's doing but it should settle around nine. I've seen around nine before, which is pretty low. I mean, when you compare this to the previous Heltec, which I'll show you in a minute, um, it, it is incredibly low, um, just for like an idle current. So there you go, like nine, nine milliamps. So I'm gonna check my phone to make sure it's definitely not connected by Bluetooth. Right, so we weren't connected by Bluetooth, but we are now, and it's made absolutely no difference. Bluetooth is so low energy anyway, um, so it hasn't really made any difference to that. I'm actually going to turn Bluetooth off now completely on the device and see if that actually reduces the uh, the idle current down. Right, so I've just turned Bluetooth off and we're doing a reboot. So we'll have to let it, let it settle again. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've not done this before. So I don't know if Bluetooth's actually going to, if you do disable Bluetooth in the firmware, does it actually kind of um, reduce the sort of idle current? So just wait for that to settle and wait for the display to go off. Right, so it's just sort of settling now. Um, yeah, it's come down a bit without Bluetooth on. I mean, you know, you're talking about, what, 0.3 of a, a milliamp. I mean, it's an insignificant amount, really, probably. But, um, you know, it does make a little bit of difference if you're just trying to get, squeeze as much out of this as possible. Of course, um, you know, if you are... That was a message that just come through on the T-Deck, and obviously it's woken this up as well, so you, your current has gone gone up now um, this is in client mute mode as well so it's not doing a lot of transmitting um, so it's just going to sort of do its occasional beacons and then um, you know if you if you send a text message out so that that is you know you can get these devices to last for such a long time in in client mute mode um, you know if they're not just repeating everything they're coming out and causing congestion on the mesh they're actually you know saving a lot of energy um, as well. Another message has just come through on long fast as well. So it's just, you know, keeping this thing awake. That's, so that's another thing, of course, if your mesh is really busy, um, you know, that's going to affect power consumption as well versus, you know, if it's really quiet and not, there's not that many packets flying around, 
um, then you know you are going to find that the, the power consumption is very low. But you know, 20 milliamps is pretty low. If you turn the, if you disable the OLED display, then it's obviously not going to, not going to, um, you know, the current's not going to go up every time you get a message. So, you know, and also if you get the device without the screen, it's probably the best best option for having sort of like a remote solar powered node. Anyway, you just don't need the screen um, sitting there. It's just an added added thing that's just going to draw more power. Okay, so shall we compare it to the OG Heltec then, the lower 32 V3, and see what the difference is there? So we're about 9, nine milliamps idle with no Bluetooth on, um, and we'll just disconnect that. And obviously we need to attach an antenna really to this, this V3. Now the, this is on the same firmware as well. So, or, you know, virtually the same firmware. Because obviously different firmwares can, um, you know, you get power optimizations, things like that. So let's start it up. <laughs> I mean, look at that, 43 milliamps. Going up to 108 as it's booting and sitting there. So, yeah, insanely different. And that's the difference between sort of ESP32 and um, NRF52, you know. It's it's crazy, really. Obviously, you've got the OLED screen on there as well. But um, we'll wait for that to settle and we'll see what that kind of settles at. You know, if you add another 180 to get an overload when it transmits, madness. Okay, so I've just swapped over the inputs on this multimeter because it was too much for the 250 milliamps when it was transmitting. Um, it's also in client mute now as well, so it's not transmitting as much. Um, the OLED screen was off. Um, it's just turned back on, I think, because we just got... I don't know, that's not a new message. Something's um, chinked through there. But but yeah, anyway, I've got that set to 30 seconds um, timeout, so that should turn off. But you can see we're above 100 milliamps. It's just, you know, massively different. Um, you know, huge amount. OLED's just turned off then, and it's gone down a few milliamps. Um, but yeah, you're not getting the other side of a hundred easily. Um, I will turn Bluetooth off because I wasn't. I was using it for the settings. So let me just try and turn Bluetooth off, and we'll see if that goes down any further. This is interesting. So Bluetooth's off now, and the screen's on. We're we've gone down a huge amount. Is that right? Um, it's the Bluetooth on this just just really not power efficient. So obviously we're getting our transmissions now. Let's wait for this OLED to go off um, and just see if that drops, how much that drops now. Because if so, I mean, if you've got Heltex and you, you turn Bluetooth off, that's a good way to save, save quite a bit of energy. Look, we're on the other side of 60 milliamps now. How interesting. So, I mean, I don't know if Wi-Fi does the same thing. I'm not going to bother um, trying it, but um, it looks like these ESP32s, um, the Wi-Fi, the integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, or integrated Bluetooth at least, is is um, is quite bad on the current because we can get this right down now to 59. I mean, it's no, it's still nowhere near the T114, but it is pretty. Um, it's made quite a bit of difference there. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. I've not tested that before, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, the T114 is very, very power efficient. I'm not sure how what it's like compared to Rack. I need to measure those to test it out. But I would imagine it's probably similar. I've looked at some sort of um, results online, uh, you know, for the Rack stuff. I need to test it myself. But it looks around that same sort of level. Rack might be slightly lower. Um, I don't know, but don't quote me on that. But yeah, anyway... This would run on quite a small solar panel um, based on that. So that's what we will be trying because there is a solar panel input on the back of here. Um, so I'll be doing something about that soon uh, once I've tested all of that side of it out. There's one more thing I want to try with this um, is the GPS. The GPS that they sent me with this device, I want to try that because I have a feeling that might shift up the old um, current a bit as well. But how much? Let's, let's have a look. So I'll just swap back to the T114. Of course, you always notice that these these little devices they run quite warm, which is a sign that obviously it's not um, not too efficient. Okay, so with GPS plugged in, goes up to 51 milliamps. So GPS, this particular GPS anyway, is taking quite a bit of quite a bit of current. Um, it is acquiring satellites at the moment, so uh, it says no GPS lock. So let's see what happens when it actually does get a fix. If it gets a fix, just open the blind to help it out a little bit. It's got a fix now. 
um, and the screen is on at the moment. So that's looking quite promising once the once it gets a fix. Um, so that's the thing. If you've got it in your pocket, I don't know how this firmware is sort of configured to deal with that. But um, if it's just going to be sitting there searching for a fix, it's going to be drawing quite a bit of current. Um, but hopefully once this screen turns off, I'm pretty sure I've seen on the T-Deck firmware um, what it does with the GPS. I mean, I'm using a GNSS GPS on my um, my one. There you go, it's going down to, yeah, it's quite low now. So um, yeah, on the on the T-Deck one, it basically just uh, periodically checks and it, and it obviously doesn't just sit there all the time trying to get a fix, it will periodically check. See look, it's gone up again now. So what's, is that just checking? Is that just sort of firing the GPS up? Obviously if you're watching and you work on the firmware, let me know, it'd be quite interesting to know how this um, how this is working. So there you go then guys, I hope you found this one interesting. I should probably do the other devices as well. And also bear in mind that this is with no power optimization or any kind of you know deep sleep settings or anything like that turned on. Um, there are some power saving options in the mesh tastic firmware that you can turn on, but I, I, I haven't touched this, so I don't really know what I'm doing there. So um, I would need to investigate that further if I was gonna sort of check that out. But I'm just basically going on stock settings, which is probably what most people will be doing um, to start with. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you've tried other stuff out um, and what you've found with these devices. Um, you know, this information sort of wasn't really generally out there. I had to dig around and find the power consumption for the for the rack stuff. I know that they run for ages if you stick a battery on them and just leave them leave them up a hill somewhere. They generally tend to work really well. And obviously the, the solar panels, the very small solar panels can power these devices for a very, very long time. Um, we've, no, we've known this for ages, but to actually see the numbers is really interesting. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Catch you next time.